Last night, Samantha and I started tying up these tomatoes, but it got dark before we could finish. So we decided to wake up early and come out to the garden and get more of it done while it's still cool. Okay, we cut there. It's been a while since you all have seen Samantha. She actually um, has been going to an activity program this summer at the school. But now it's over and now she can be home and help us with stuff in the garden. So that'll be nice. Now that we've downsized our chickens, I just feed the chickens and the ducks together every morning and they all seem to be getting along just fine. It's actually kind of nice not having as many chickens as we've had in the past. That way we can let these guys free range. When we had so many, uh, it was kind of chaotic having that many birds free range, which is why we usually kept them in their big pen. Um, but it's kind of nice just having these few uh, between the chickens and the nine ducks and the quail, we still get more than enough eggs. <laughs> Let's let the ducks out before the chickens eat all of the food. The two groups of ducks still don't really spend the day together. Um, they could both go their separate ways during the day, but at least they don't seem to mind sharing a house at night. So that's all that really matters. We don't have to have two separate duck houses. They Both groups go in at night and they seem to get along just fine. Baby bunnies are getting so big. They're spending most of their time now out of their nesting box. They might go in there at night. They know where it is and they hop in there, you know, for some safety. But they are so pudgy. This isn't even the biggest one. Their eyes are open. Whoop. Their eyes are open. They're exploring all around and uh, it's going well. We started with five, we still have five. That's a good thing. We have three black ones and two gray ones and these are actually considered blue. You're okay. But they're doing really well. <laughs> Let me show you guys how the turkeys are doing. They're growing so fast. I did make this temporary screen door uh, for their barn here. It's not very attractive, but it's doing the job until I have time to make something better. At least it gives them some airflow during the day.
a lot of the pepper plants that we planted are doing really well and we actually have two different kinds of peppers that are ready to be picked today. Uh, the first one are the banana peppers, which are actually Samantha's favorite type of pepper. Uh, she asked that we plant some this year, and we are, and they're the first peppers we're going to harvest from the garden. The second type of pepper that's ready today are some of our hot wax peppers that look just like banana peppers, so we're going to have to make sure to keep them separated. We're hoping to ferment them this time so that as we get more and more, we can just kind of ferment more and then add them all into a big jar to keep in the refrigerator. So we've never done that before. That'll be a new experience for us. So we've got a bunch of these banana peppers ready. We're gonna go ahead and pick them and see how many we get. And we're excited to try fermenting them for the first time. This one's pretty yellow. Yeah, that's fine. These are big ends. I know. Wow. Well, that's not a whole lot, but it's a good start. We've got the hot peppers, the hot wax peppers to do next. These hot wax peppers are doing just as well. Maybe even better. I don't know. There's a lot. are so big. Looks like we got about the same of each. Now look, don't they look like exactly the same? Fortunately, one of the baskets has Grace's name on it <laughs> from like Easter or something, but that's how we'll keep them separated in the house. So let's go inside and see if we can figure out how to ferment these guys so we can start preserving them. I want to show you guys something pretty exciting. I've never grown any kinds of colored bell peppers um, other than the ones that just go red naturally when they're super ripe, but I'm growing a bunch of different colored ones this year and the lilac pepper from Baker Creek is actually starting to turn purple. It's so interesting. When it grows at first, it is like yellowish. You can see over here on this bush, this one is yellow. And then it starts to get these dark patches on it. And that is what turns the lavender color, the lilac color. So that one's just gonna keep getting darker and darker. And this little one here will keep getting bigger and then it will start turning uh, that purple color. I think that is beautiful. I'm really interested to see how that tastes. I have one more exciting thing to show you. Let's go over here. Just a couple days ago, I noticed that all of these beans were starting to blossom. And this morning, I realized that there's some teeny tiny beans starting on them. We are gonna be picking beans in no time. Well, it is nice to be in the house and the air conditioning because it is pretty hot outside and pretty muggy. So we're going to uh, ferment both of these baskets of peppers here. We have them conveniently marked as the hot peppers and the not hot peppers. They look exactly the same. So I'm glad that they are marked so we don't get them mixed up. Samantha doesn't like spicy peppers. Mm -mm. So we're going to be fermenting these separately. I wanna talk with you a little bit quickly about uh, the books and the equipment that we are going to be using for fermenting. I haven't been fermenting for very long. I don't ferment a whole lot of things, but I'm wanting to do more and I'm wanting to learn more. Um, so I want to talk with you about some of the books that I've been using to learn about fermenting. Um, and all of these things will be in our Amazon shop if you want to learn more, if you're interested in starting to ferment as well. Uh, the first book that I recommend is this one called Fermented Vegetables. It is a good teaching book about how fermenting works, how to ferment, and then it has a bunch of different recipes for all types of vegetables that can be easily fermented. Uh, the second book that I've been referencing actually comes along with this kit that I've been using. Um, it's the Mason Tops book. Uh, it has just a few recipes in it that are very basic recipes and using vegetables that like 
everybody enjoys. So I've been using this as reference and I want to talk with you a little bit about the Mason Tops kit. Basically when you are fermenting foods there are a few things that will make your life easier. One is a little weight that weighs down your vegetables and keeps them under your liquid or your brine and something that's going to help the air bubbles burp out of your jar so that you don't need to open your jar um, every day to make sure that it doesn't explode. And the Mason Tops system works really well. They supply you with the weights that you'll need. These are little glass weights. And then they supply you with these silicone air locks that have um, kind of a split in the middle, kind of like a baby bottle. And as the, um, the pressure and the air builds up, it just burps itself, basically. Uh, it comes with, uh, the kit comes with four of those weights, four of the silicone things. It also comes with a little mallet that you'll use to make sauerkraut and the cookbook. So I've been enjoying these, the little that I've fermented. There are other things out there online that you can use and I'm sure they work just as well. Uh, this is just something that I picked up and I've been using and I enjoy it. So I am going to be working with the hot pepper, so I'm going to wear gloves so all of that hot pepper juice doesn't and oils don't get into my skin and uh, end up burning me later on. We're going, both going to be working in a separate jar. Now the mason top weights and lids that I have are for the wide mouth jar, so that's what we're going to be using. And we're just going to be cutting these peppers into rings. I'm going to be keeping the seeds in mine. You can choose if you want to keep your seeds. It doesn't really matter because yours are mild. Should I make them, like how thick should I make them? Probably just, you know, normal, like this, a half okay. inch. So we're just cutting these into rings like, you know, a quarter inch thick or something. We're gonna put them right in these jars. I'm keeping my seeds in. I like it spicy. afraid we weren't going to have enough peppers to reach the top, but I think we're going to. Yes, I think push them good. down in there. I think mine's I think as mine's full as I want full. to. Mine's Do you want garlic? Do you want garlic in yours? Yes, please. Okay. We're going to grab some garlic and put them in here too. Get the garlic rolling. So we have these filled up to about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch from the top and that's, that's good. We're gonna put, do you want one clove? Probably one clove is probably enough for probably. this for just small of a jar. Will you peel mine? Yeah. Why don't you smash that yeah, before you put it in there? We're just gonna smash that a little bit to open it up so that all of that um, brine that we're gonna end up putting in here can soak through that and then the flavor of the garlic will really pull through everything. You're gonna smash mine too? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's ready. Now we just need to make the brine. So Samantha wants to make double sure that she doesn't accidentally eat some of the hot peppers, so she's gonna put labels on the jar. Uh, so we'll label what's in there, but we're also going to put the date on it so that we can keep track of how long they've been fermenting. Now I'm going to make the brine. In general, a fermentation brine uses one teaspoon of salt for every cup of water. So I'm going to be putting four cups of water in this big measuring cup, and then I'll add four teaspoons of salt and mix that up. If we end up needing more, then I can just use that same ratio to mix up a little bit more. So I forgot to mention also that it's really important that everything that you're going to be using in this process is clean. We don't want bacteria to be growing in our brine and in our ferment. So I'm just looking for a teaspoon. There we go. I'm going to be using pink Himalayan salt. I actually order this in bulk from Azure Standard. That's where I get like all my bulk foods. If you're interested in bulk ordering from them, uh, we have a, a link to that in the description of this video. I'm using pink Himalayan salt because it's not as processed 
as table salt. The sodium level in it is just a little bit lower and it has a lot of the natural minerals still within the salt. So again, I'm doing four teaspoons because I have four cups of water here. Can you stir that up for me? Yep. Okay, Samantha, so you're gonna pour the brine until it just covers the peppers. Okay? Mm -hmm. So down. There you go. Push those down in there. I think that'll be good. Mm -hmm. Then we need to put one of these weights. And wait, there's a special way. Do you see how it's kind of beveled and it's a, li it's, mm -hmm. um, a little smoother mm -hmm. on that side? That side goes down. Yep, go ahead. That's fine. Then put the top on. And, and gently screw those on top. There. So these are done. That was pretty easy. Now we just need to wait. I'm gonna put these on a plate because sometimes ferments kind of get really active and some of the liquid will kind of come through the little top and, and down onto your counter or whatever. Uh, and I wanna make sure to catch that. So I'm gonna put these on a plate. I'm gonna put them in an area that does not get direct sunlight, but near enough that I can check on it and make sure that they're doing okay. I will test these. I'll eat a piece in about two weeks and see if I think they're done. Fermenting isn't an exact science, it's not an exact uh, time, because a lot of things are gonna uh, make the timing go faster or slower, especially the temperature of your kitchen or wherever you have your ferments. So in about two to three weeks, these will be done, and then we can put a solid top on these and just put them in the refrigerator. Okay, we're done with that project, but we have not let the goats out today you know, in the pen that we made for them around all of that brush. So I wanna take you guys out there and show you the amazing job that they've done on that area, clearing that out. They're gonna be excited to get out there. So this morning during chores, I gave them some dry hay and now it's time to put them out to eat up all the brush in that fenced in area that we have for them. Let's go. Kevin must have let them out when he came out to work. So that was nice of him to do that. They're doing such a good job and they're having such a good time out here. I can't believe the amount of work that they've done out here in just a couple of days. Well, the goats are doing a great job in this new area that I built for them, kind of their test pen. Uh, they're really clearing it out well. And so far, it's been a week now, I think, that we've been putting them over here, or pretty close to a week, and not a single one has gotten out of the electric fence. I haven't really even seen them test the electric fence. Uh, so I think this is going to be a good system when we get back to the cow area. And we've got a couple projects ahead of that, and then I'm gonna get started working on that uh, fence back there. Let me go show you guys what I'm working on back here today. Uh, we made some design changes to our pig pen before we let the pigs out of their starter pen. I think it's going to make things easier at the end of the season when they get to be, you know, big pigs. So we're back by the pigs and you can see that they're still in their training pen or their temporary pen, which is built out of hog panels. And then I have electric wire run on the inside of the pen uh, to teach them about the electric wire. Now in the past, our pig area has ended right here. You can see this T post here is a corner, it goes that way, and then it runs about a quarter acre that way. So the pigs have a pretty big area back here. The problem is we, we don't 
generally spend a lot of time back here. I mean, I do come back every day to check on the pigs, but it's not a real well-traveled area for us, which is okay most of the time. Uh, but this year we wanted to make some changes so that uh, the pigs are more used to us and we just have easier access to them. So what I've done is I've actually cut a hole in this electric fence between these two T-posts and I'm going to run more electric fence up that way so that their pen will actually come all the way up to the edge of our pasture where, where our gardens are. And that way, uh, not only will they be a lot closer so that we can give them food and water easier, uh, they'll just see us a lot more because we're out in the gardens, we're out you know, in that area a lot, and the pigs will be able to see us and we'll be able to see them a lot easier. So I think all in all, it's gonna be a great thing. And then an added bonus to that is uh, when we need to load one of the pigs in the trailer this fall because we're selling one of them, uh, we'll be able to back the trailer right up to where I'm putting the pen area now and hopefully be able to get it into the trailer much easier. So what I've decided to do is make this this area, it'll be kind of a long narrow area for the pen. Uh, it'll be 16 feet wide because that's how wide a hog panel is. So on this end, instead of electric wire, I'm actually having the hog panel. And then I'll be able to attach their feeder and their water and everything right here uh, which is real convenient for for bringing food and water down the second thing that that will make this nice is that then at the end of the season i can just take off uh, this and slide it down so in between these two t posts i'll be able to back the trailer right up here and hopefully then they'll be able to load in much easier now the two pigs that we're keeping for ourselves we're actually we'll butcher ourselves so those we don't need to take anywhere uh, but the one that we're selling, uh, we will be delivering to a butcher. So uh, I think this will be a much better system when they're, you know, big 300 pound pigs. So that's where we're going to wrap this video up, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by to see what we're, we've been working on today. We appreciate it. If you enjoy our channel and you're not subscribed yet, we'd love for you to be a subscriber. Also, if you'd share our channel and this video with people who you know would also like it, we would really appreciate it. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.